On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton, the elephant, heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person were calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton. But who are you? Where? He looked, and he looked. He could see nothing there but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, murmured Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why, I think there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust, some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eye. Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow in the pool. He has no way to steer. I just have to save him because, after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. So gently, using the greatest care, the elephant stretched his great trunk through the air. As he lifted, the dust speck, and carried it over, and placed it down, safe, on a very soft clover. Home, humped a voice. T'was a sour kangaroo, and the young kangaroo, in her pouch, said, Home, too. Why, a speck as small as the head of a pin? A person on that? Why, there's never been. Believe me, said Horton. I tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen, and I hear him quite clearly. I know there's a person down there, and what's more, likely there's two, even three, even four. Quite likely, a family, for all that we know. A family with children just starting to grow. So please, said Horton, as a favor to me, try not to disturb them. Just please let them be. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. You're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Newell. And the kangaroo plunged in the cool pool. What terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So. He plucked up the clover and hustled away. Through the high jungle tree tops, the news quickly spread. He talked to a speck. He's out of his head. Just look at him walk with that speck on that flower. Horton walked, worrying almost an hour. Should I put the speck down? Thought Horton with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I can't put it down. And I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Then Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint, he could barely hear it. Please speak up, said Horton. He put his ear near it. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You helped all our folks on this dust bath to no end. You saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. You saved all our churches and grocery stores. You mean, Horton gasped, you have buildings there, too? Oh, yes, piped the voice. We most certainly do. I know, called the voice. I'm too small to be seen. I'm mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. Our buildings to you would seem terribly small. 
but to us, who aren't big, they're wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who, and we who's are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town. You're safe now. Don't worry. I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle monkeys climbed up Horton's neck. The wicker sham brothers came shouting, What rot! This elephant's talking to who's who are not. There aren't any coups, and they don't have a mayor, and we're going to stop all this nonsense. So there. They snatched Horton's clover. They carried it off to a black-bottomed eagle named Vlad, Vlad I cough, a mighty strong eagle, a very swift wing. And they said, would you kindly get rid of this thing? And before the poor elephant ever could speak, the eagle flew off with a flower in his beak. All that late afternoon, and far into the right, that black bottom bird flapped his wings in fast flight, while Horton chased after with groans over stones, and tattered his toenails and battered his bones, and begged, please don't harm all of my little folks, who have just as much right to live as us bigger folk do. But far, far behind him, that eagle came flapping, and over his shoulders called back, Quit your yapping. I'll fly the night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind it. And I'll hide this tomorrow, where you'll never find it. And at 6.56 the next morning, he did it. It sure was a terrible place that he hid it. He let that small clover drop somewhere inside of a great patch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneered the bird. But I think you'll fail. And he left with a flip of his black bottom tail. I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on my small speck of dust, in clover by clover, by clover with care. He picked up and searched them, and called, are you there? But clover by clover, by clover he found, that one that he sought was for just not around. And by noon, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, had picked and searched, and piled 9,005. Then, on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till he found them at last, on the three millionth flower. My friends, cried the elephant, tell me, do tell, are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? From down on the speck came the voice of the mare, We've really had trouble, more trouble than our share. Then that black bottom birdie let go and we dropped. We landed so hard that our clocks have all stopped. Our teapots are broken, out rocking chairs smashed, and our bike tires all blew up when we crashed. So Horton, please, pleaded the voice of the mayor, will you stick by us who's? while we're making repairs. Of course, Horton answered, of course I'll stick. I'll stick by you, small folks, through thin and through thick. Um, humped a voice, for almost two days, you run wild, and insisted on chatting with persons who never existed, such carry-ons in our peckable jungle. We quite had enough, of your bellowing bungle. And I'm here to state, snapped the big kangaroo, that your silly nonsense game is all through, is all through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too, with the help 
of the Wickersham brothers and the dozens of Wickersham uncles and Wickersham cousins and Wickersham in-laws whose help I've engaged. You're going to be roped and you're going to be caged. And for your dust speck, ha, that we shall boil in a hot steaming kettle a bezel, not oil. Boil it, gasped Horton. Oh, that can't do. It's all full of persons. They'll prove it to you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Horton called. Mr. Mayor, you got to prove it now, that you're really there. So call a big meeting. Get everyone out. Make every who holler. Make every who shout. Make every who scream. If you don't, Every who is going to end up a bezel nut stew. And down the dust back, the scared little mare. Quick called a big meeting in Whoville, town square, and his people cried loudly. They cried out in fear, We are here! We are here! We are here! We are here! The elephant smiled. That was clear as a bell. You kangaroos surely heard that as well. I heard that snapped the big kangaroo, was the breeze and the faint sound of wind through the distant trees. I heard no small voices, and you didn't either. And the small kangaroo in her pouch said, Me neither. Grab him, they shouted, and cage the big dope. Lasso his stomachs with ten miles of rope. Tie the knots tight. Tie the knots tight so he'll never shake loose. Then dunk that dumb speck in the bezel nut juice. Horton fought back with great vigor and vim, but the Wickersham gang was too many for him. They beat him. They mauled him. They started to haul him into his cage. But he managed to call to the mayor. Don't give up. I believe in you all. A person's a person, no matter how small. And you, very small persons, will not have to die. You make yourselves heard, so come on, now, try. The mayor grabbed a tom-tom. He started to smack it. And all over Whoville, they whooped up attacker. They rattled tin kettles. They beat on brass pans, on garbage pail tops, at old cranberry cans. They blew on bazookas and blasty great toots, on clarinets, oom pans and boom pans and flutes. Great gusts of loud racket rang high through the air. They rattled and shook the whole sky. And the mayor called up through the howling mad halibaloo. Hey, Horton. How's this? Is our sound coming through? And Horton called back. I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't as strong quite as mine. They don't hear a thing. Are you sure all your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? Are you sure every who down in Whoville is working? Quick, look through your town. Is there anyone shirking? Through the town rushed the mayor from the east to the west. But everyone seemed to be doing their best. Everyone seemed to be yapping or yipping. Everyone seemed to be beeping or bipping. But it wasn't enough. All this ruckus and roar, you had to find someone to help them make more. He raced through each building. He searched floor to floor. And just as he felt, he was getting nowhere. And almost about to give up in despair, he suddenly burst through a door that the mayor discovered. One shirker, quite hidden away, in the Fairfax Apartments, apartment 12J, a very small, very small shirker named Jojo was standing, just standing, and bouncing a yo-yo, not making a sound, not yipping, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed inside, and he grabbed the young twerp, and he climbed with the lad up the Eiffelberg Tower. 
Liss, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour, the time for all whose, who have blood that is red, come and come to the aid of their country, he said. We've got to make noises in greater amounts, so open your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed, when they got to the top. The lad cleared his voice, and he shouted out, Yop! And that yop, that one small extra yop, put it over. Finally, at last, from the speck on the clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean. And the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They proved that they are persons, no matter how small. And their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true, yes, how true, said the big, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do? From now on, I'm going to protect you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. From sun in the summer, from rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them, no matter how smallish. Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss Read by the voice of Elliot Wright. This is Elliot Wright writing goodbye. Till next time.